The upstairs was my safe haven. It was the one I, I loved most of all. It's the usual beer boss. Everybody's laughing and cutting up and talking, you know, and dancing. All of a sudden you heard people screaming, from laughter to screaming. For years, it was the worst mass murder of gay and lesbians in American history. I could see the glow of the flames and all of a sudden the fire just ripped across the upstairs lounge. Bodies burned so bad that there was nothing left but the bones and they were seared to the floor. I saw the, the reverend's body hanging halfway out the window. I knew him. I never got to grieve. On the street after the fire, it was like, like just chaos. This, this, the smell of a burning building, the smell of burning flesh. And I just kept looking through the crowd, hoping to see Reggie and, and Adam. Everybody was trying to find out who had made it out, who had perished. And I didn't just lose my lover, I lost 32 of my best friends, too. We were damaged emotionally. I'd try to sleep at night, I'd wake up with nightmares, I'd see those people burning. I kept expecting him to come through the door. I'd get up and fix breakfast and put, lay his clothes out for work and everything like he was going to get up and go to work. I don't think I ever felt loneliness in my life until that point. New Orleans has robbed me of my innocence, my childhood. And I'd, I'd tell God, I said, well, thank you. You saved my life. Thank you for not letting me burn up. And I'd say, but next time, just let me die. It shows what can happen through hate. Somebody was angry and full of hate, and they took it out on everybody in there.